Hey, good morning, everybody. Eric Jackson here. I'm here in my uh, home office, uh, which I won't be tomorrow morning. I'm heading down to Grand Lake, Oklahoma for the next FLW tournament. Uh, by the time you're watching this, I'll be down there training. That's why I'm trying to wrap it up before, before I leave. So hope you guys are out there catching lots of big fish and having a lot of fun being on the water. Uh, but if you're like me and every once in a while you like to um, capture and get some video and some photos of your fishing, um, but it's a pain in the butt and you want to make it easier, uh, that's what this video is about. I'm going to try to give you some tips on filming with GoPro cameras specifically and how to do it in a way that's uh, kind of non-intrusive or at least as non-intrusive as possible and most importantly get you a lot of really cool stuff. So <clears throat> yeah, I've been fortunate enough as on team, team GoPro for over eight years and had a lot of uh, a lot of good training from the GoPro folks, um, settings, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. <clears throat> but I've adapted a lot of neat things kind of on my own from, from that knowledge to capture really good fishing stuff. So I'm going to take a sip of coffee and we'll check it out. Okay, before we get started, if you haven't done already, right down there, click the subscribe button because I'm going to be producing videos every week and I'd like you to know when they're coming out. Um, if you decide you don't like them anymore, you can obviously unsubscribe. Uh, but also, leave me a comment. Uh, give me a like if you like what you're seeing, but leave me a comment and let me know what you want to see happening next. So there's basically three categories of, of videos that I'm making. Uh, fishing, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, whitewater kayaking. And if you're looking at the fishing one, only so many of you are into whitewater kayaking, but hey, maybe you want to see some of that too. I will be doing whitewater kayaking with your fishing boat too, so we'll combine them. And then last but not least, uh, kind of life in general, I'm calling it my two cents. That's a take it or leave it kind of a thing, but hey, if you want to check out my thoughts on these things, uh, that's what that one's about. Okay, here's the tools for today. I've got a, an iPhone. And I've got a GoPro Hero 5. <clears throat> now, yes, there's a Hero 6 and Hero 7. <clears throat> and I've got some Hero 7s on the way. But if you've got a Hero 5, even a Hero 4, even a Hero 3, you can do um, what I'm showing. But I highly recommend at least getting the 5 because it's self-enclosed in the case, uh, meaning you no longer have to have an additional case to keep it waterproof. And that makes your life a lot easier. It also makes it easier for filming uh, for fishing because you need to have this thing open. You need to have access to external power if you want to film all day. All right, a couple concepts. Concept number one, if you're like me, you don't go fishing for 20 minutes. You go fishing for like 8, 9, 10 hours a day, right? Or you go fishing for a long period of time. Nothing's more annoying than hitting the record button and just recording for hours on end and then hoping that the battery doesn't die, the card doesn't fill up. And last but not least, looking at the clip for seven or eight hours to try to find a couple cool sections of the clip. Luckily, GoPro has a really neat setting. I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna try to do this uh, in a way that you can see it. GoPro has a really cool setting. Let's see if I can do this backwards. Whoa, can you read that? Push on the camera button, boom. Scroll down to looping. Does that say looping? That's looping. All you do is hit that button. Did you see how I did that? You hit the little camera button, scroll down to looping, hit the looping button. Now, you hit the start button. Boom. You're now... Re I didn't do it right. Let me do it one more time. That's pretty funny. Even with my reading glasses on, I did it wrong. Hold on. Oh, I am on looping. Okay, I'm good. I was doing it good. Okay, sorry. Hit the record button. Look at that. I'm recording. You see that? It's recording. See how it says I'm five, six, seven seconds? What's going to happen here? It's going to get all the way to five minutes. And then it's just going to continue to say five minutes. I'm creating a five minute loop. Now, what does that mean? That means that I'm creating this flowing loop a five minute loop so once i get to five minutes it essentially erases the older stuff and it just keeps a five minute bubble of of footage that's moving on 
Now, why is that good? Because you just fish, 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 and if for two hours you don't get a bite or you, nothing happened that you're excited about, that you don't care to have, you never have to hit the stop button. You just keep letting it go, 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 go. And then you catch a fish, you land it, you show it off to the camera, Ooh, all excited, you do the lip and grin. You let the thing go, off it goes, and you're like, now that's a clip I want. You hit the stop button, boom. Guess what? You have all the way from that moment to the last five minutes, and unless it took you more than five minutes to cast, land the fish, and release the fish, you're gonna have the whole thing, all the important parts, on your camera. And only that part, you're not gonna have the two hours before it. So loop mode is an absolutely critical mode for fishing. And it's the mode that I film in any time that I want to capture all the good stuff. Hi, Roxy. How you doing? That's my dog, Roxy. She's like 13 years old. She's a Dalmatian. She's not the one that drove the RV in the lake. She just had breakfast. My wife, Christine, in the background. Okay. There's a problem with loop mode, and there's a problem with, uh, with that, and that is that your battery's going to die, and then you got to replace batteries. But the way to prevent that simply plug in and then you pick your external power source of choice I use a Goal Zero Venture 30 you'll see that Goal Zero Venture 30 just happens to have enough power to power your your GoPro all day long it will also power your phone all day long and for added measure of safety it's waterproof so it's a great outdoor filming thing now notice that it's plugged in. Well, how do you do that? And here's my other camera. There's this door. You gotta know how to take this door off. So here's the door. You slide it, pull it, and then literally just pull it off. And then you've got this, see how it's like, uh, kind of like that? And then when you need to put it back on, clip back on. Now, I can tell you that this one doesn't have a door. Why? Because I lost it. So when you do take them off and you film with them, put them someplace you can remember where it is because otherwise you're going to totally lose it like I do. So I've got to order another door for that one. So I can't use this camera for whitewater kayaking at the moment because I can't get it wet. That's a problem. So this for the moment is my fishing camera. See the little white sticker on the top? Okay, cool. Now, the next thing is mounting. Uh, actually, let's not even talk about that yet. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. Mounting. Okay. Probably one of my favorites. This is called the Gooseneck. This is a GoPro product. It changed any angle. Of course, you just throw your camera in. I'm assuming you know how to do this, but anyway, I'll show you anyway. But then you clip it down. Boom. And then from there, any angle. And you can put this on, if you have a Jackson kayak, you'll have a GoPro mount already on there. So it's a slide mount. So you slide it on a sticky mount. Um, uh, where do you put sticky mounts? You put a sticky mount on the bow of your boat. It's a good place to put it. <clears throat> you put a sticky mount on uh, the paddle. Okay, paddle mount. So the paddle mount is one of the most critical mounts if you're uh, paddling a kayak. And the reason is because with the paddle mount, that's your selfie stick, super long selfie stick. So you stick the sticky mount on the paddle blade, and then you can extend it out, and boom, you get some amazing shots, including the underwater shots. So paddle mount is how you get extended shots at a different angle, not just the otherwise known as the crotch shot, where it's just in the bow pointed straight at you. But also, and by the way, this gooseneck is tall enough that the crotch shot isn't really a crotch shot. It's nice and high. It's at about shoulder level. It's not at head level, but it's a little more um, appealing shot than the one where you just mount the camera on the bow and you have like the full crotch shot. But at this stage, if you're doing crotch shots, uh, it's not that cool. Anyway, skip the crotch shot, get a gooseneck, get higher. Paddle mount, that way you can go off to the side and get, it's almost like somebody else is taking a photo. It's super cool. All right, so paddle mount. Now there's one more thing. It's, mine's in the RV. With this jaw, with this uh, gooseneck, you have a jaws clip, like basically like a really strong um, vice grip type of a clip, a squeeze clip. That allows you to clip on all kinds of things, trees, paddle shafts, whatever. So 
you need to have that as well. And then from there, you can be as creative as you want. So gooseneck. Now, if you're doing selfies or you're filming and walking around with a camera and you really want to do something cool, a gimbal, like you want to have like super amazing shots that don't bounce around, you get one of these Karma Grip gimbals. The Karma Grip gimbal is cool for a lot of reasons. One, because it gives you amazingly smooth, clean shots for selfies, for filming your friends, for walking around, showing people stuff. Um, it also has got its own battery in there, so it keeps the camera charged for a long period of time. It's kind of expensive. You do not need a Karma Grip, but once you have a Karma Grip, it's pretty cool. So like if you're um, running with it, um, which I do a lot, uh, it's a nice woo, gliding smooth shot, kind of like a, you would expect to see on TV or whatever. Okay, next. Uh, I got my I got my iPhone. Um, I'm not. I didn't bring it in here, um, but I'm a big fan of the PowerPole Micro. Um, PowerPole Micro um, goes on the back of your of your kayak. Every Jackson kayak we make has the the mounting point for the Micro, so it's just screw it in four screws. Don't even need a drill. Just use a screwdriver because it takes like 30 seconds. Screw on the bracket, put on the Micro, and you got this eight or ten foot stake that goes way up in the air. Well, what is that stake good for? It's good for mounting a GoPro on. That's what it's good for. And it gives you the most amazing shot. Okay, you're going to see a lot of a, or a couple shots here. I'll show you that, what that looks like. So you put the, uh, the GoPro on top of the power pole stake. And all of a sudden, you've got an aerial, like a drone, following you everywhere you go. Now, you cannot reach that camera once you stick it up there. It's really hard to get to no matter what you do. Now, if you put the power pole all the way down and you turn around and get, put your knees on the seat and reach way back, you can touch it. But for the most part, it's kind of like once you get started, unless you want to get out of the boat, get to shore, pull the stake out, uh, you need to have that thing ready to rock and roll. So that is where not only you need loop mode, but you need to be able to drive the camera with your phone. So let me teach you how to do that. Uh, step one, you turn your camera on, camera's on, okay, cool. Step two, we're going to go to the GoPro app, I don't think I can do this with two hands, GoPro app, what just happened? My camera just turned off, don't tell me my battery's dead, I'm leaving it on. Battery's not dead. Okay. GoPro app. Uh, it's used, if you don't have the GoPro app, you go to the app store and you download it. Like, I'm not going to teach you how to do that because if you don't know how to load an app, it, this isn't going to work for you. All right. Boom. I've got a bunch of cameras here. Which one is on? The one with the blue light. You see that little blue light? That means it recognizes my camera there. Boom, I tap it. Start preview. I'm not sure what that says. I'll have to read it. I want to join. Yes, I answered yes to the question. Do I want to update? Uh, connect to your camera's Wi-Fi settings. Da, na, 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 na. What am I doing here? I'm connecting to, can you read it? There it is. Here it says, Eric Jackson's Hero 5 Black. Ooh. Connect that. So now I'm on Wi-Fi. So my Wi-Fi wasn't connected, so it didn't like it. Um, you do not always have to, why is it not doing it? You do not always have to do that. Am I connected? I am connected. So therefore, when I go back to the app, Connecting, starting preview, ooh, there you go, check it out, who's that guy, there's me watching me, watching me, and then the phone too, alright, I am connected, so right now I can go ahead and put my camera up on my power pole, and you're using a handlebar mount, so GoPro handlebar mount. 
da -da -da. so you get the handlebar mount and then um uh doo -doo -doo. handlebar mount on top of the gopro mount and then uh external power you've got your cable you've got your cable plugged in you've got external power now you've got to connect that external power to the um to the thing also not, or to the to the power pole I use a ram mount X grip a ram mount X grip will hold the goal zero and hold just about any of the little card external power sources little battery thingies so anyway um, that's what you're gonna what you're gonna use you can also I've done it before use rubber bands to tie it on to the I've used fishing line I've used a variety of things to hold my external power to the top of the power pole and then from there you're driving the thing with your phone so you hit the on button off button now your phone here's the other thing your phone is gonna die oh, man it's true so if you go out there and think that you're gonna fish all day because your power your GoPro is charged and has an external charger you're wrong because your phone is going to be using Wi-Fi the whole time so it's not going to go to sleep and it's going to burn your phone battery so if you don't want that to happen you've got to open up your thing you got to plug in your phone cord and have an external power source on your phone as well I use a goal zero venture 30 for that also um, so now I've got those two things going Ooh. That just sounds like too much. No, but let me summarize so you you, um, you can re review this on your own when you get a chance. Um, but it's really simple. Mount the GoPro on the power pole with a handlebar mount. Plug into power. Connect with the app. Have your phone on with external power. And then make sure this is in loop mode, which you can do with your phone. And then off you go all day. So literally you just sit there with your phone and you say, stop start yeah very cool now the that particular mount on the stern is not enough um, that's not the only camera you need you do need the face shot and you've got the gooseneck um, another one there's uh, ram mounts makes this really cool swing mount um, yak attack makes a really cool mount also there's a variety of camera mounts that you can put on the front of your kayak that gives you the angle back. And that angle back is what you're gonna to wanna to use when you catch a fish uh, for a photo. You wanna show your fish off for a photo. <clears throat> now, uh, photo, let's talk about photo real quick. Let me turn this back on. So for photo, the mode that you want is time lapse. So I'm gonna go, boom, photo, no, that's not it. Burst, no, that's not it. Time-lapse photo. Okay, that is it. So what happens here? Uh, can you read it? It's hard to read. Okay. Anyway, it's time-lapse mode, and it's going to take a photo every half second. That's the default. You hit it, and it's going boom, 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 boom. That's how you get good photos. So you'll have that on a mount in front of you, pointed at you. You hit the button in time-lapse mode, and it's gonna go bing, 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 and it's gonna get a photo every half second. So you're like grabbing the fish, you do what you wanna do, Ooh, let the fish go, um, or just a great scene. You're paddling through a cool cool area, under some trees, whatever, and you don't wanna, you're not gonna sit there and hit the button every time you want a photo, you want it on time-lapse mode. Now, if you're getting really advanced, and I'm not gonna demonstrate this today, but if you do time-lapse mode every five seconds, or um, and the way you change it, it says half a second there on the bottom. Boom, you just hit that button. And then you go from a half a second to one second to two seconds to five seconds. Now every five seconds, it's gonna take a photo. This is good when you are, you wanna do show like a, a time-lapse of something happening, like the sun coming up and going down, a moon coming up, going down, um, you paddling a long distance or pedaling a long distance and covering some area, and then your any of your editing programs will, brrr, like GoPro Quick, will be do it right away, but any of the other ones will put it together as a video, and it will show you like cruising through a long ways. It's really cool, so that's time-lapse mode. Okay, what do you think? 
Um, we're not going to get into editing today. However, um, I think that should probably cover the, 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 the key things that people are missing. Uh, loop mode. And by the way, yes, you can do loop mode for every minute, but it's the default is five minutes. Leave it at that. Frame rate, like the like <coughs> the default is 1080 30. Awesome. But if you want to do slow mo, like a fish is jumping, and you want it to look cool, you need to bump it up to 60. And again, that's on that screen. You just where it says 30, you tap it, and then where use your finger to make it say 60. Tap it again. Now you're on 60. You could do 120 for super slow mo, but you burn up your card pretty quick, so I recommend using uh, 60. So 1080, 60 um, is good enough for almost any, anything you do online and allows you to go slow mo. Loop mode, external power, GoPro app, external power on your phone, a second camera um, for a bow shot, and that bow shot camera is the same camera you'll also use for your paddle mount, so you'll take it off the bow. Put it on your on your paddle, and yes, there's also a wristy mount, and I like to use the wristy mount. Wristy mount whoo, looks right down the uh, right down the the pipe of your of your rod. You get to see the reel, you see the rod, the line go out, the lure land, super cool. And then a very popular fishing one that I don't actually use a whole lot because I use the wristy or the other mounts is the chesty mount. And you'll see Scott Martin does the chesty mount like all the time. And that is actually a, a, a good forward-looking one if you want to get your point of view. Um, I'm using, if I'm kayak fishing, <coughs> instead of the chesty mount, I prefer the power pole mount because you get to see the whole action. You get to see you in the frame, your whole kayak, and the surroundings. And I think that's a, a better angle myself. Um, and it's certainly a more unique angle um, where the chesty mount, chesty mount's cool. Um, I'm not knocking it. But if you've got the GoPro on the power pole and you've got a front facing one uh, and you want to add another one, a POV one, I highly recommend the wrist mount. That's super cool. Any questions, uh, ask them in the comments section and uh, we'll go from there. But meanwhile, that's how I fish with, or that's how I film fishing with GoPro cameras and uh, pretty fun. We'll see you. Oh, yeah, don't forget. You need to subscribe, uh, comment if you have specific things you'd like to see, because I'm basically filling out. Um, you'll see one fishing video per week, uh, one whitewater one per week, and one my two cents per week. So I'll be on the road and see you soon.